So, yeah, I've kind of got a, a little inspiration from um, from the children's message as well about shepherds and kind of took me to one of the verses that was talked about in that children's message um, in Psalm 139. But um, before we get to that, I just want to encourage you this morning and, and wish you a happy New Year's Eve morning. And, or, yeah, yeah, New Year's Eve morning, right? And so uh, it's time to be done with the old and bring in the new. And it's, it's always kind of an exciting time of year for me personally and probably for you. You know, some of you might have had a great 2023. It was the best. Some of you might have really struggled with the whole year and had a lot of things, you know, that weren't all that great. But how many know that God is good and God is faithful through it all? Uh, we're here today. You know, most of us are upright and walking and breathing and and uh, and taking on nourishment and so on. And so um, we should be celebrating. If if there's nothing else, we can thank God that we're we're on the planet and it's been a, it's been an amazing year. It's really. Uh, uh, I want to encourage you, the one that created you is still with you today. And even if you're struggling, even if you're going through some stuff, uh, you're going to get through. I just, I couldn't help but think as we we're singing that song in the middle of the, in the storm, you know, we're going to raise a hallelujah. And it, it could just be pouring and pouring and we're just going to keep raising a hallelujah because he's the king and he hasn't changed and he's still alive. And uh, he's still in pursuit of you and, and me. Amen. So, um, Praise the Lord. Psalm 139 is, is an awesome psalm about, about creation. And, uh, it, and the whole thing about shepherds is so cool that God uses ordinary people. The shepherds were ordinary people. They were like farmers. And in fact, the shepherds were probably looked down upon in, in those days as just kind of uh, anybody can do this job. Don't have to be educated. You go out there and live with the sheep and you get stinky and... and uh, that was it, you know, and so it wasn't a real glamorous position, but God used the shepherds to usher in the king of the world, Jesus. And so God uses ordinary people. So you can be encouraged today. If you think you're ordinary, you're a candidate to be used by God. If you think you're nothing special, you're a candidate to be used by God. And by the time we're done today, I think you are going to think you're something special, not in a proud way, but just in a complimentary uh, mode to God that he made you special. And so before we do that, I just want to do something that was suggested in the kids part of this uh, message. And, and I think it's kind of fun. So let's, uh, let's get back into the kid mode again a little bit and just, join, just bear with me for a few minutes. If you have blue eyes, would you please stand? If you have blue eyes, would you please stand? Come on, look at all these blue-eyed babies here. Wow. Okay, quite a few of you. Okay, you can sit down. Anybody have hazel eyes? Like me? Oh, yes. Come on, Hazel people. Yes. Wow, look at them all. Okay, let's give one toward the brown-eyed people. Any brown eyes? Oh, yes. Wow. Pretty nice mix. Pretty nice mix. Okay, you can sit down. Anybody have some other color that we... <laughs> Sometimes red. Oh, green. Any green eyes? Come on, you green eyes. How many? Only three? Four? Whoa, you guys must be really special. Really special. If you have curly hair, I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, you know, putting all kinds of things in it to make it curly, but if you have naturally curly hair, how about you, Stan? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Yes, you curly-haired people. Woohoo! Come on, curlies. Okay, you can sit down. I'm not going to ask for the straight-haired people because I'm assuming the rest of you are kind of, either you didn't want to stand up or you have straight hair. Uh, if you have dimples, oh, no hair? <laughs> yes. Well, here's what a friend of mine told me. He said, God made some really beautiful people, and then the rest he put hair on. <laughs> so if you have dimples, you know what a dimple is? Not a pimple. No, not pimple. Dimple. If you have like, you know, those cute little things in the, in your, no dimples in the room. There's a dimpler. Oh, look at them all. How come all the dimple people are on one table? Maybe one family. 
Wow. If you can curl or roll your tongue, come on, stand up. So we have to give lessons after church on how to do that for the rest of you guys. If you're left-handed, stand up. Any lefties? Two? Three? Oh, this whole group, there's only three lefties? Any, anybody like me, left-eye dominant? Right-handed, but left-eye dominant. Now, we're really confused, guys. We should have a little meeting after church, too. See if we can iron this out. That's cool. I mean, isn't that cool? I mean, it's just like all these right eye dominant people, but a few left eye or whatever. Um, if you're, if you have freckles, freckles, come on, freckle people. It's these redheads again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Freckles. Way to go, freckles. I'm starting to get some freckles in my older age. I don't know what's. <laughs> What's going on with that? (laughs) If your hairline, I should have the rest of my son-in-laws here, but if your hairline or your forehead makes a point or a widow peak, they call it, you need to stand. No, don't be pointing at your son, Barkle. That's not nice. (laughs) Wow, okay. Oh, some women have that too. Cool. Cool. Okay, everybody, here's a little trick. Everybody, without thinking about it, clasp your hands together. Just go ahead. And now look and see which thumb is on the top. How many, your left thumb is on the top? Stand up. Wow. So the rest of you, your right thumb is on the top, or is it somewhere? (laughs) Okay, you can sit down. (laughs) <laughs> it's buried in the pile. So they say that 55% of people uh, clasp their left hand over the top, 45 uh, their right hand with their right thumb. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And the point is that we're all different. Amen. And some, some things make us unique. And we're going to read in Psalm 139 about being wonderfully and fearfully made, fearfully and wonderfully made. And so let's read Psalm 139, 1 through 18. It's probably one of my favorite psalms of all time. It's really awesome. Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted, acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. It almost seems like you should read this really slow and just let it sink in. It's so rich. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I, can, I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I send into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Here we go as the the ones I want to really hit on this morning, 13 and 14. For you have formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they all all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. 17, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. You know, some some people think that that one should read, how precious also are your thoughts about me or toward me. And uh, just the fact that God is thinking about me, gets me pretty excited 
But even, even any thoughts that God has that come my way is pretty exciting. How great is the sum of them? If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. And so uh, he goes into a little, a little rage about the wicked here, and, and then he finishes up with, you know, in 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So, Lord, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you that it's so powerful and so true. We ask that you would open our eyes this morning and let us hear something from you and let us walk a little closer to you today as we look into your word. Change us and mold us. Make us to be more like Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So. It's, pretty, it's a pretty interesting psalm, just that you can pick it apart, and there's really a lot of apologetics in Psalm 139. By that I mean uh, there's a lot of defenses to who God is and what he's done and what he's made and, uh, and what he wants it to look like. You know, the, the giftedness within mankind, it kind of speaks of uh, his order and his, his divine order. And I don't think that God wants us to be you know, all the same and all under some kind of one kind of a rule where nobody can advance or nobody can achieve greater things because we're all wired and gifted differently. And so it's all, it's all right there. And, you know, there's so much about life and birth right in this psalm. How magnificent. I mean, you want to know why I'm pro-life? Just read Psalm 139. God has everything to do with creation. And uh, we don't want to mess with his creation. And so there's so much in it. But just these words, fearfully and wonderfully... Um, wonderfully is in the Hebrew it means uh, pala p-a-l-a it's tra- translated it means di- to distinguish or to separate or set apart to sever um, marvelous it's like it's something so good that you have to set it apart it's, it's something so good that you have to separate it and so we're wonderfully made and then fearfully it, it means it, it's inspiring of awe uh, reverence, astonishment. It's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. That's, fear, that's, that's fearfully made. That's, that it's, it is, it um, just creates some awe within us. And so when you put those words together, fearfully and wonderfully made, uh, it's, it's incredible. And together they're saying that each individual is intricately, uniquely created by God. It's, it's emphasizing the idea that God's craftsmanship and forming and designing human beings is, is awe-inspiring extraordinary what he's done amen let me give you a couple other observations from 13 and 14 number one there's a complexity and a precision in the design of every person a complexity and a precision in the design of every person each person's body each person's soul and mind is deliberately intricate and and made by god designed by the creator come on now are you with me it's, it's, it's so amazing. It's just everybody is just intricately designed by God. It's so cool. Uh, God's the artist. Number two, God's the artist. He's the creator of all life, and he alone gets the glory. Amen? He's the creator of all life. He gets the glory. Number three, we should be in awe of what he has made. We should be in awe. That's why the respect for life from birth, from pre-birth, all the way to the end. There should be this deep respect for life. Amen. I was with my 96 year old um, mother-in-law the other day, and we were sitting at a table with 90 some year olds and um, they were all getting up there and it's just so cool to just to sit with them, you know, and and they're not all perfectly honed in and sharp, but some of them are. And, but just the wisdom and you start talking about the old days with these, with these people and what they've been through and how long they've been around. And, and there should be a respect for the elderly as well. And just because they've been on the planet as long as they have, we should just respect them and care for them and, uh, and help them to live out all their days that God has for them. And so this, this respect, this deep respect for life and, and for the unprotected in the womb. Come on now, there should be a fight for that. You know, to protect the unprotected. And so each person is unique. Each person is valuable. Each one is wonderfully made. And so number four, that, that's it. Each person is unique. Everybody is unique. We're all masterpieces. <laughs> C- 
Come on, we're all masterpieces. We are. We are. You know, and and you, you don't have to you don't have to get all cocky, but you can just think about it. You got curly hair. You're a masterpiece. You're left handed. You're a masterpiece. You're right handed. You got straight hair. You got green eyes. You got hazel eyes. You got blue eyes. You got a mixture. You're special. You have them, amen. God God gave them to you, and they're special. I know in law enforcement, the one thing that always got me was the fingerprints. This have all the millions of people, billions of people. Nobody has the same print. There are many that are very similar, very close, almost identical, but different. And so even identical twins have different markings and different features and different personalities. And it's, it's, it's fascinating. Amen. Wonderfully made. Each person, masterpiece. There's something special and remarkable about every person. Praise the Lord. Number five, it reminds me that every life has value. Every life has value. And it, it reminds us to appreciate and honor our own individuality and the diversity among humanity. Amen? Hey, you know, some of the buzzwords in our culture have been along, around long before it became buzzwords in the culture. Diversity, you know, respect, honor. I mean, everybody gets a chance. Everybody deserves a chance. And so those words are just, they're, they're all over the scriptures. Uh, diversity is, is something we should celebrate. Number six, it, it helps us realize we didn't just evolve into what we are today. We are created and designed with a purpose. God had a purpose in mind. That's why everybody's different. Because he has a purpose in mind for your life. Something different for your life. Something unique about your life. Something unique about you. Something special about you. You're not just, you're not just evolving into somebody because your family's like this or your mom or dad was like this. God has something special for you. Amen? You might have some of their features, some of their looks, some of their character, all of that, but God has something special for you. You are you. You're unique. You're intricate, and you're designed by God to do great things for him. One of the greatest things you can do for God is get to know him. Amen? Get to fall in love with him and experience him. And when you experience God, you experience life. The more you experience God, the more you experience life and appreciate life and appreciate the abundance of what he's done, the beauty of what he's made. The more you know him, it's just like, wow, God, you're amazing. How did you do that? You ever get up in the morning and just think, how did you do that, God? Or something happened during the day and it's just like, what's the chances of this happening? How did you do this? How did you pull this one off, God? It's amazing some of the stuff that he does. Amen. So the human brain, it's been said, is the most complex and orderly arrangement of matter in the universe. The human brain. You know, you think of all the animals, they have a brain. Some of them not very much of a brain. But, you know, most of the animals, I guess all of the animals have a brain. And, you know, birds and all the, all the creatures, they have some kind of a brain. But man is unique and uniquely made by God and is the apple of God's design. All of his masterpieces, man is the apple of his eye. And so special and created with this soul and this spirit that can encounter the living God and have a relationship with the creator. And so it's so cool. Your brain is, is, is amazing. And the more they learn about the brain now, the more amazed people are. And if it's just off a little bit somehow... We're in trouble, amen? Anybody off a little bit this morning? I fell out of a crib. And by the way, when you sleep in a crib till you're five years old, there's a problem. But I fell out of a crib when I was five years old and landed on my head. So I have a little bit of an excuse, amen? <clears throat> Just saying. Think of your body. Kids, think of your body. Think of all, just go like this. My wife has been practicing this a lot because she broke her wrist. But just go like this, one finger at a time. Come on, help me out here a little bit. One finger at a time. Can you do that, you guys? Kids, can you do it? One finger at a time. I'm, I'm doing this all for you, Ann, so you can get your workout in. But just think of the, the systems in your body that work together to make that happen. Your brain connecting with your nerves and your your muscles and all that, the, the cardiovascular system that gives you energy so you can run and 
and do things, the mus- muscular systems that, that makes you hold things. And make, How many know if you lose some of those things for a while, it's really hard? Like, like Anne has lost some movement in her hand right now, and it's, it's really hard to just hang on to anything or do anything. And so they all work together so intricately. And uh, your digestive system that helps you process food and helps you um, also to discard waste, your hormonal, hormonal system that, that uh, determines your gender. Amen. <laughs> God determines it. And we can't change it. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. It's, uh, if you have the X chromosome, that's what you is. Amen. You can't change that. And so God designed that. God made the genders and your, your energy, your, your immune system that keeps you healthy, uh, your, your five senses, your taste, your, your, your hearing, your smell, your seeing, your touching, all those things created by God. And it's, it's wonderful. Um, you know, think of the body's ability to heal itself. You know, it's pretty cool. I, I almost felt like showing you guys a picture of, of Anne's little break on her, on her wrist. She broke this bone right here. And, you know, they take a picture of these things, and then they take a picture of when they fixed it. And so they have seven screws going, and they have a, like a little T uh, metal thing that they put on the bone, and there's seven little screws going across the top of that thing in this little bone. I'm like, come on, guys, is this overkill? It's like putting too many nails in a board, you know? It's like, holy cow. And there's like three or four going down this way, and they, you can see it, and they go all the way through the bone. It's like, is this amazing or what? And they said, when you get done with this, your body will just absorb that, and you won't even know that it's in there, and you'll have full movement, and you'll be right back to normal, and that bone will be stronger than it was before. Of course, it's got a steel plate on it. But, you know, it's like, it's, but the body's even without that, putting that in there, the body would have healed itself. That bone would have healed itself. But the problem is it might have been a little crooked, you know. Might, she might have looked like my finger or something. But... You know, it's like the body is just so amazing. It can heal itself. And God, God designed it that way. And, the, you know, the white blood, blood cells that rush to the, to the injury and close up the wound and fight off infection and all the things that the blood does, I mean, to fight infection and to heal. God wired us that way. God did all that, and he made it, and he gets the glory. And so we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? So... One more important truth that I want to close with is, is that God didn't make us just to survive the planet. He, just, he didn't make us just to survive the planet or to do our own thing. He made us, he created us to have, that we would have a desire for an ongoing relationship with him. Amen? I believe that he put that in us. He put that in us. He wired that in us. In us. We could get into some more apologetics here or, or some more... Um, theology about God's plan and God's order. I believe that God planned it that we would know him. I believe it's for all mankind that he designed us. I believe all mankind has that hole on the inside that can only be filled with a relationship with him. And, you know, that's, that's why it's so important for us to, as the shepherds did, to go tell somebody. Tell somebody the good news. Tell somebody about what he's done. Tell somebody what he did for you. Tell somebody what he did on the cross for mankind. Amen? And so we were made for him. Without a relationship with him, we'll always be searching for something. We'll always be groping for something, looking for some one more thrill, one more big thing, something that will satisfy that hole in our heart. How many know that you're not an accident? Hello? You're not an accident. You're God's workmanship. The Bible says created in him to do good works that he's designed beforehand that you would walk in them, that you would learn them and you would do them. So you're not an accident. You're a creation of God. You're a masterpiece. What will you do with the gifts? What will you do with the masterpiece? What will you do with the the creation that he has made? What will you do with your design? How will you use it for his glory? Amen. Will you serve your, your will you serve will you serve and will you share your life and your gifts with others? Will you serve? Will you share your life and your gifts with others? I pray that we will. Amen. I pray that we'll be influencers, not the ones that are influenced. We'll be influencers. Influencers for Jesus. 
and willing to share, willing to go, willing to do, willing to be whatever he wants us to be. We're masterpieces. I know you've heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. You're a piece of work. You're a beautiful piece of work. Amen. You're a wonderful work. You're a work of God. You're a work of God. Would you just say that with me? I'm a work of God. I am a masterpiece. Let's say it with humility. I'm a work of God. I'm a masterpiece created by him. Believe it. Get that in your heart. You don't need, you know, you don't need others to tell you how good you are. You don't need to look good to other people. That stuff is all overrated. Self-esteem, self-image. How many would say it's overrated? How many would say if God loves me and God's okay with me and God designed me, he loves my design, I'm okay. I'm doing well, thank you. I don't care if you approve or not approve. God approves. I feel good. Uh Uh-huh. Right? That's as simple as it gets. When you have God esteem, you're okay. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. You don't have to be this or be that. You have God esteem. God esteems you. God says, you're fine. I made you that way. I have a plan for you. There's a reason why you're designed the way you're designed. And I love you. On top of that, I love you. On top of that, I love you. And I died for you that you might live. Let's close with prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you for your master design, Lord, for your master build for each one in this room, for each one of us. God, we thank you for how you've made us unique, intricate, woven together in our mother's wombs. Lord, you designed it. You made us the way we are, Lord. And There was something that you dropped in us, something of your DNA, something of what you planned. And so we thank you for it. We love you, Lord. We believe it. And our hearts are settled because of it this morning. And we just thank you, God. I pray if there's anyone who struggles with esteem or not feeling good about themselves or struggling with their look or struggling with this or that or or how good they are, Lord, we just thank you that you've made us all good that you've made us all, Lord, to accomplish great things for you. You've made us all to know you and to walk in your ways. And we give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.